Hey everybody, it's Tammy with On Point Accents and Designs. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a freshie from start to finish. So I have some beads that are already cured and dried, and we'll use those. But first, I'm going to show you how to um, put the beads together with your scents, and um, then you'll just set them aside until they cure. So what we're going to need for this project are cookie cutters or molds. I'm going to use a mold today. Um, you can use metal cookie cutters, just be careful with those because it has a tendency for the, when it's cooking, to ooze out of the bottom and then it just doesn't look good. So, and it's easier to get them out of the molds. So if you can, I do molds, if, but you can do the metal co um, cookie cutters. Then I have, these are my silicone spatulas that I use when they come out of the oven and I'll show you that in a little bit later. Let me put those aside. Okay, so you'll also need a scale. This is the same scale I um, use for mailing out my orders. Um, you're gonna need some roofing nails and some mica powders. Of course, you're gonna need jars and you need some sort of a scent to put in them. Okay, and then I cook mine in a toaster oven and I bought these silicone mats from Amazon and I just put that in there so that it gives it a really good flat look and nothing sticks to it. So you'll want, I would suggest, they're very inexpensive, but I would suggest getting some silicone mats. So let me go ahead and switch the camera so you can see and we'll get to work. Okay, so let's get to doing the beads first. Um, so you'll need an empty jar and then you're gonna need your, let me show you. You're gonna need your beads. These are unscented beads. Okay, so when you get them, you're gonna need to let them sit out for quite a while. It depends how many you buy um, at a time. So it may take anywhere from, I would say five to seven days to get this vinegary smell out of them. So when you first get them, they're gonna smell really gluey or like like vinegar, exactly. But And if you mix them then with the scent, it will not smell right, it will stink. Um, so you need to make sure that you let your beads air out and sniff them and then when the um, vinegary smell is gone, then you're good to go for making your, um, your cured beads, okay? So, I know a lot of people use different um, ratios and so forth, but, okay, so see, here's my pan. And then I'm gonna tilt you down so you can just see what I'm doing, okay? So, here is my, I'm gonna set that pan aside. Here is my scale and my nails, but we're not gonna do that quite yet. The nails so I want my jar I do a combo of six ounces of beads to one ounce of scent and I find that that is my best ratio then you're gonna let it set out to dry and then every time you walk by it you're gonna shake it to mix it up um, the first night that you put the scent in you want to shake it quite a bit and then once it's cured, you'll see it's like this. It doesn't stick to the jar. So that's how you'll know it's ready to make your freshie. And as you can see, I have dates on here. So I put these beads in on 524. And I didn't have a good ratio in here. So as you can see, it never cured. So on 610, I added more beads. And then it finally dried. So that's when I came up with this new plan of six ounces of beads to one ounce of scent, and that has been working perfectly for me. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn on the scale, and it's to zero, so then I'm gonna put my jar on, and then I'm gonna zero it out again. And you can get um, scales from Walmart, I got mine from Amazon, but any food scale will do, I, like I said, this is my mailing. All right, so I keep all of my beads in this great big plastic container, and then I'm just gonna pour the beads in until I get to six ounces. Let me pour from this side so you can see what I'm doing. I'm not left-handed, so if I spill it, sorry. 
All right, so we're at four point six. All right, I'm gonna go a little slower now, but because we're almost there, five point seven. And all right, so we're at six point one. That's fine, and I'm gonna zero that out again. And I do have a little teensy weensy measuring cup that um, I can put the scent in and just pour it in, but I'd rather do it this way, so that way I know it's correct. So I'm gonna put in um, one ounce of the fragrance oils. And as you see, it's at 0 0.3. Zero point seven. just be really careful. And you can use the little measuring cup. I have a little measuring cup that I can use. Um, I just think it's, all right, so we're almost there. And there, we're at one ounce. So that's all we need to do, put this aside. Um, this is fragrance, um, this one I got from Amazon, it's rain. I wouldn't suggest getting it from Amazon um, to use in the ones if you're selling them, but for yourself, it's fine and this one I got for myself um, because I don't like really strong scents okay my number one seller though is one called butt naked and you can get that um, with Brambleberry Lone Star Candle Company and um, oh gosh what's his name peanut something I'll look it up for you guys all right so then once we've got it we're gonna shake 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 it really good You see how that sticks and it's very shiny very sticky and then you'll see this one's so different because this one's dry um, and I will say there is a difference so this is fragrance oil and essential oils I used in this one essential oils take a lot longer to dry so that is just my personal opinion okay so what also you need to do because really the beads are only at their best smelling up to two months. Um, I don't think there's any hard, fast rule on it, but so make sure that you label it with the date. So today's 630 and the scent. So I used rain, so rain and then the date, 630. And then we're just gonna keep flipping this over all night. The first night I shake it a lot and then after Tonight, I'll just, every time I walk by, I'll flip it. Like, shake it and then flip it. Shake it and flip it. It's kind of fun. All right, so that one we're going to put aside, and we're going to go ahead and make a fresh. Okay, guys, so I'm going to use this one. If you use metal, make sure you're using some cooking spray on it to um, and grease it really good because they're really hard to get out if you do not when you're using the metal. The silicone, I don't even use um, cooking spray or anything. They come right out. Okay, so first of all, what I do is I take the beads and I put it in. I have this top on here really tight. And then I just put it in to make sure I have the right amount of beads. And then when you have something like this, you want to push them over into the, the little grooves like that. Just make sure you're getting it all in there, right? Let me see. So it doesn't look like it's over here in the ear very well to me. So let me put it in the ear. All right, we're going to put more in. This one's called Bali, and this is an essential oil. And like I said, essential oils do take a little bit longer to cure, and, but it doesn't matter which you use, essential oils or fragrance oils. I tend to like to use the fragrance oils, um, but I had these and I just want to use them up. All right, so you see that's full, pretty full. So let me put the top back on this. And then I'll actually, 
I was going to mix it in this, but I'm going to mix it in this jar since it's the end of the jar um, with the color. Okay, so the good thing about these is it's a lot easier to pour in after you've measured it. The metal ones, you kind of have to pour it on here, and then you have to kind of figure out how to get that in the, whatever you're going to be mixing. But as you can see, sometimes you just make a mess. So let's get that in there. I, um, some people cook them in their regular oven. I don't, um, I don't know if you should or should not. And it's just, I don't, I prefer not to cook it where I eat my, cook my food. So, but that's up to you. All right. All right, let's get all these down in here and then let's pick a color. Okay. So for this, as you can see, these molds, see that are very, um, intricate. You see my craft mess over there? Uh -huh. Anyway, these are very intricate. You can take your mica powders and you could color on down in there before you, you um, cook them. And I think I'll do the bow that way, or you could do your paint pen and decide which color you wanna use. So we're gonna use mica powders. And let me just say, it really doesn't um, take a lot. So these things may last you forever. I got all of these um, from Amazon um, when I first got started, and I just had them forever. And I would like to get rid of them sooner or later, but they seem to last forever. Some of the um, candle shops have such pretty ones. So I'm gonna use this one, it's called Moss Green. So let's go ahead and mix that in. I just dropped that in the floor, but that's okay. And then see, our, we have our beads in here. And if I ever get it open. Okay. So I'm just gonna, usually I do my cows um, in brown. Only need a teensy weensy bit. See that? All right, so let's just shake it up. See if it's the color we like it. I will also say you don't want to be using metal um, spoons. Um, it can make your scent smell different. So don't use metal if you can help it. Like so. And then don't put too much mica because if you do, it won't bake well. So, all right, you see that's very light. It's very light and I want it just a little bit darker because some of the beets aren't even colored yet. And so I'm gonna put just a little bit, but let's see if you can see down in the jar at how light it is. Yeah, you see how light? I'd like it just a little darker. So I'm gonna put just a tad. Just a tad, see that? That wasn't even a tad. All right. All right, so that's all I'm gonna use. I know for a fact. Um, so I'll shake it up. I mean, you could stir it if you want. I just find it fun to shake them. But when you are doing the one that you just cured, you do wanna shake it up hard like this. All right, that looks good. And now what I'm gonna do, all right, so I got my paintbrush right here and I'm going to put, look at that really pretty yellow and I'm gonna put that down in there, right only right where I have that bow. So, you see how I'm doing that? Just tapping it into where the bow is. And I have my um, oven outside on my sun porch because, I don't know, I'm just paranoid about baking it in the house. I think it's safe, it's probably fine, but I don't know. So this, the way I do it is just outside. All right, you see that? I've 
looking at the bow part. And then I'm just going to put this also in his little horns. And sometimes it'll come right like on your Okay, and you don't have to do this. You can just pour it in and whatever. Okay, so then you wanna take your nails. Make sure when you get your nails, you don't get the serrated kind um, because that'd be so hard to get out. So some of them are really jagged. You don't get that kind. And you're just gonna set that right here. And you're gonna have to hold on to it. That's the thing. Some of the molds come with the little thing that comes out um, so that it automatically makes a hole for you, which I have some of those, so I'll show you those in a little bit because they're outside on the porch. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and I think we got this position the way we want it. We'll give it a good little shake. You could um, color, I have old cups that I use and I just wash them in the dishwasher. You could use um, sandwich baggies, you know, anything you want really to put your beads in for coloring. But remember, you don't wanna use them until they're dry. So like this for fragrance beads, mine anywhere from two days to uh, five days. Um, essential oil beads, a uh, week, a week or two sometimes, it just depends. on, and, and it depends on the weather also. All right, so I'm gonna hold this in place until we pour some beads. You can put it in after um, you get all your beads in and just kind of work it all the way down underneath the beads. But I have found that when I do that, I don't always get it all the way through and then it kind of ruins your freshie. So this is probably the better way to do it. So I'm just holding it in place. Sorry that I'm blocking your view. And then I'm gonna take my little spatula push it into the ear there and push it into this ear, push it all the way up into the bow and usually it doesn't take me long to do it. I'm just kind of showing you guys so I'm taking my time. All right, let's see. These are kind of thick and they do take a lot of beads. I have a smaller one and it sells better. So I would say I have the very big round four inch and then I have these really big ones. I would say that the round three inch and the smaller version of this sell a lot better than these giant ones. So if you're gonna sell them, you may wanna go a little smaller. They tend to sell better. All right, so we're just pressing it all down in there. Make sure I watch my a nail and you could put glitter in there. You can, when you do the round ones, you can put card stock on the bottom and it will automatically be glued to it when you um, finish cooking it. And I do, that's what I do, I just stick it in there upside down. And when this cures, it's good to go. All right, so let's, Get some more beads in. And these ears, these ears need some beads. Okay, so let me take my little, I got these up from Amazon, it's a whole pack. Whole pack, different sizes, and you will need something like that after they're finished, and I will show you why when we finish with this one. Hopefully guys, this doesn't take very long at all. They're really fun to make. I can make lots of them in just a short period of time. I was storing mine in um, the refrigerator and what you wanna do, you, want, you have to do this. You need to buy bags that are scent proof and I get mine on Amazon. I'll link them below um, because you wanna hold the scent in. You could put them in the refrigerator when you know, while you're waiting for someone to buy them or if you're waiting for a vendor event, um, but you don't have to. I just um, 
have a big plastic bucket that I keep mine in with a lid. And um, when I go to vendor events, I do take them in a cooler. because Sometimes it gets really hot out there. Uh, righty. Let's see. I think I need just a little bit more. All right, there we go. We're good to go. Looks great. Smooth it all out. And you can put gloves on if the scent bothers you. I don't really put gloves on. You are going to need some heat proof gloves for the baking part. And we'll go out on the porch and we'll bake it and show you guys what it looks like. Okay, guys. So I have this, uh, I don't know how you say that, Oster, Oster, I think it is, from Walmart. And it's set at um, 350 and generally they take about 10 minutes to cook um, but these thicker ones sometimes take a little bit longer so we're gonna put this one in and then I'll pull pull it out and show you how to check. okay so it's ready to go in I have it on my little tray just like I showed you in the other room we're just gonna stick it in the oven and my husband is gonna time it for about 10 minutes and we'll pull it out and I'll show you how to check okay we're gonna go ahead and pull it out and check it so put your heat safe gloves on or oven mitt whatever you've got and I can already look at this and tell it's not ready so these thicker ones sometimes need a little bit more time but you see how you can see it the beads haven't melted yet so we'll put that back in. Okay, so we're gonna, we took another three minutes and we're gonna go ahead and check it. Okay, this looks a lot better. And I'll show you how to check it. So, I don't think you can check it as you just take your finger or something like a spatula and touch it. And if it pulls up, then it's not done. So this one is not, you see it's staying, so I, I think it's done. And then, then I have these, remember these uh, silicone spatulas. And what you're going to do is go and press down the sides so that you don't have all those little spiky things to cut off. You still may have a few, but this will help a lot on that. So you just go straight down in there. Just like that. While it's hot. And make sure you're using silicone because, or you can use a, like a spoon or knife from inside your house. But other than that, don't use stuff because it will melt. And then just go around the nail also. Kind of push it down. And then I'm going to go back around one more time and then we'll just sit and let it dry. But I just actually push down in there. All right. And then we'll just let it dry. I mean, not dry, but cool off. Okay. So it's cooled off. You want to wait till it cools to take it out. And then with these, you just kind of peel them and they pop right out. If you're using the metal um, cookie cutters, it's not going to pop out quite as easily. All right, so look at that. That's the back of it. And you can see it has a, just a few of the little spiky things. But since I went through and poked it all down um, while it was still hot, that's why you don't have half as many that you need to trim off. And then the nail, you see the nail is still there. And what we're going to do is take um, some pliers like this. And just grab hold of the nail like that and you're just gonna twist like that just like you're unscrewing something and as you can see it just starts to come out when you do that so once you've started it you could just push it down on something just like that like I did the table and it just pops right out it's very easy and then you just put it away for next time and so then you have your hole to put your string through. Okay, so this one we did green, just cause I wanted it green, but you can see where I did the mica powder right there and on, on the bow and on here. And I will go through with markers later 
and I'm going to put it really close so you can see all the details. See all the details there? You can go through with markers and like do black here, brown. I'll probably go through with like a tan or light brown and do that. And then you're going to put your string through right through here. You could add some beads or something to it um, and it will look really cute. But that's it. That's how you make an entire from start to finish freshie. We made our freshie. We went from beads to freshie. Okay, so let's just recap. So to make our beads, we're going to put in six ounces of beads, one ounce of either essential oils or fragrance oils. We're going to shake it up constantly until it dries. We know it's dry when it no longer sticks to the jar like this one is wet and it sticks when it's dry it's not going to stick at all and then when you're cooking you're going to cook on 350 for something really thick see how thick this one is um this one took me 14 minutes to cook so the thinner ones is usually eight to ten minutes um i use a toaster oven you can use your regular oven i don't know any rules against it or any health issues with it but i just prefer to use the toaster oven and you can see that perfectly look at that so all that detail I'll go through and paint later but this part we did with the mica powders prior to putting it in the toaster oven and you could have done the whole thing like that if you wanted to um, and then you're gonna put your stretchy cord in and maybe some beads and a bow to embellish and if you want it to like with this like cute little flower you could have stuck it in while it was warm and it would stay and that's about the, all there is to it. They're a lot of fun to make. So happy freshy making and leave me comments below. I'm happy to try to answer any questions that you might have. Don't forget when you're storing them to use the no scent bags and I will link everything below that you guys need. And um, thanks for watching and happy crafting.